Welcome to Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. In this series of episodes, we are looking into how cities developed and influenced the society in Poland and the United Kingdom. But certainly that's still a, a, a very, uh, how both Oxford and Cambridge colleges work, this sort of small collection of people. Each college has a slightly different characteristic, slightly different architecture. And it's also interesting that back in that era, uh, in that era uh, w whether you were studying in Oxford or Cambridge, or whether you were studying at uh, the Krakow Academy, you were all united by the Latin language. Indeed, and, and uh, most of what you studied would be sort of philosophy, mm -hmm. theology. Very uh, similar. Uh, and and yes. really, and, 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 and not much else. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could really say that this was an international European elite that was very much shaped by uh, the clergy and, and religious life in general. And uh, even though today there is a stereotype that um, the church was always very rigid and didn't uh, innovate a lot, but uh, if we look at, at, uh, at that era, it uh, truly was uh, the bedrock of uh, European knowledge and, and learning. So, uh, Well, indeed, uh, and particularly after the Renaissance, because mm -hmm. it was because of the work that the church had done in preserving the, the, ancient, the ancient text that there was actually, uh, the Renaissance was possible. Absolutely. And, and you say Latin was very important mm -hmm. when, for example, Thomas More would correspond with Erasmus in the, what is now the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. They would speak in, uh, correspond in Latin, which yes. was the the language of educated mm -hmm. folk. And uh, another example that we can find from the Krakow Academy or Jagiellonian University by then is uh, uh, in the 16th uh, century and uh, at the end of the 15th uh, as well, where you had this uh, very international uh, grouping of which one was the great uh, astronomer, uh, Nicolaus Copernicus who um, studied at, at, the, at the Krakow Academy or Jagiellonian University. And naturally, as any other great student of that time, um, spent a lot of time in uh, the city-states of, of northern Italy as well. Uh, in general, that was an era in which uh, Poland and, uh, and northern Italy had very close connections. Uh, geographically, it's not that far from Milan to Krakow as northern Italy and so southern Poland. There are some pretty nasty mountain ranges in, in, between, <laughs> in, yeah. in between, but once you cross them, uh, geographically, it's not that far. Uh, and in 1507, uh, King uh, Sigismund uh, the I, the old, uh, took to the throne and married uh, Queen Bonasforza from a very influential uh, Milan family. And uh, through his new contacts that he had made in the area, he started bringing over one famous Italian architect after another. And this was really the, the start. Technically, it started maybe a few decades before at the end of the uh, 15th century. But uh, at the start of the 16th century, the trend was in full swing and, and the Renaissance had really made its, its big entry into Poland. And the, the gate to the rest of the country was through uh, the royal court in, in Krakow. So a lot of that beautiful architecture that uh, we see in Krakow today uh, dates back to the 16th century and those uh, Italian architects that were uh, brought over. Uh, in general, the 16th century uh, is in Poland known as uh, the golden century or Poland's golden era. Uh, the, the advances in, in science, uh, literature, culture, all of them are enormous. And actually, it coincides with uh, Poland's uh, greatest position probably in, uh, in the military sphere in, in European history. Uh, probably the climax is somewhere between uh, 1610, when, when the Poles are fighting in Moscow, <laughs> uh, up until uh, the 1640s. Uh, when there is this last successful war, the Smolensk War in, in uh, the 1630s. Uh, and this is really um, the pinnacle of, uh, of Poland's power on the European scene. But the foundations for it were really laid in the 16th uh, century. Adam, as usual, the clock has defeated If I could just ask you to pause there and we'll pick it up next time. There we are. I've had to interrupt Adam almost in mid-sentence, but fear not. If you join us next time on Poland Daily History, as we hope you will, we'll pick up the story and learn more about the exciting city of Krakow. In the meantime, thank you for watching.